I am with Leah Gazan today. She is the NDP Member of Parliament. She's from Winnipeg, uh, North Center, I believe, Leah. Winnipeg Center. Winnipeg the best, Center. Best Winnipeg riding Center. in the world. <laughs> best riding in the Good world. Saying. She is here <laughs> to talk about her basic income, livable income guarantee. She's put forward a motion in the Canadian Parliament, and this is getting a lot of interest. I think now it's over 30,000 or approaching 30,000 signatures. So, Leah, thanks for stopping by. Happy to have you. Oh, well, thanks for having me here. So before we start, I just want to read out your motion because I want people who maybe haven't seen it, I have a lot of American viewers as well, to really get a sense for what you're proposing, what you're putting forward in the Canadian Parliament. And the motion reads that in the opinion of the House, the government should introduce legislation and work with provincial and territorial governments and Indigenous peoples to ensure that a guaranteed livable basic income accounting for regional differences in living costs for all Canadians over the age of 18, including single persons, students, families, seniors, persons with disabilities, temporary foreign workers, permanent residents, and refugee claimants, paid on a regular basis, not requiring participation in the labor market, education, or training in order to be eligible, in addition to current and future government public services and income supports meant to meet special, exceptional and other distinct needs and goals rather than basic needs, including accessible affordable housing or accessible affordable social housing and expanded health services. Replace the Canada Emergency Response Benefit for an ongoing and permanent basis in a concerted effort to eradicate poverty and ensure the respect, dignity, and security of all persons in respect of Canada's domestic and international legal obligations. That sounds fantastic. That sounds I think Fantastic. so. <laughs> I mean, I know maybe you're biased, Leah, but that's little so, biased. But that's yeah. sound, that's fantastic. So, talk a little bit about why this motion. Now, you're a relatively new MP, so I'm guessing that you would have brought something like this forward if you had been in Parliament a few years ago. But, but beyond that, why, why now? Well, actually, this is something that I campaigned on uh, prior to COVID uh, during the last election. Uh, This is not a new idea. This is certainly not my idea. Uh, In Manitoba, the province in which I reside, we had a Mincom study uh, many decades ago. um, And what we found was that uh, when you provide people with an income guarantee, a livable income guarantee with wraparound supports, uh, that it's uh, a cost-saving uh, measure. I, there's a lot of stereotypes. Oh, if you give people an income, they'll stop working. In fact, research says exactly the opposite. And I have to go with research. And what and what they found was that, in fact, it saved money on health. Mental health was better. Physical health was better. Crime rates went down. When you look after people, that's good economics. Uh, during COVID, uh, we have seen with the CERB uh, that it is possible uh, to um, support people. It's about it's about choices. Governing is about choices. And unfortunately, uh, in Canada, there's been an overinvestment in what I call corporate welfare. We spend billions of dollars on the fossil fuel industries. We gave $50 million to MasterCard. And mm-hmm. myself, a member of parliament who represents the third poorest riding in the country, I have to beg uh, to uh, get people housing. I have people calling my office families uh, mm-hmm. that are now living in hotel rooms. I have families that are living in shelter. This is abhorrent. And as I said, governing is about choices and I choose people. And I think in a time of COVID, when we know just public health and safety, that has been guidelines that have been outlined by Health Canada, one of the best deterrents is to be able to physically distance frequent hand washing. That requires a home. Yes, it and does. that requires yep. access to water. And that is becoming more and more in crisis, even in the city of Winnipeg, as mm-hmm. families get more strapped, as unemployment rates go up, people need stability and they need to know that the government will look after them uh, during COVID. I don't believe that's happened. No, I think you're hundred percent right. And that's great to reference that Mincom study. And a lot of my research as a, as a doctoral student, I, I, I looked at that and they did find now, it was, a, it was a small experiment, but they found a 8-9% reduction in healthcare costs 100%. in the particular co- um, Dauphin, which is, which we know how expensive healthcare is. It's worth every penny, but 
but it's very expensive. And if we could somehow manage to save even 5% nationwide on our healthcare expenditures uh, going forward, in addition to uh, the, the, the increased quality of life, I think that would be very, very important. And as that study found, they, the, the only groups of people that, 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 that saw declines in their work share were people with young children, mothers with young children, and yeah. people that were choosing not to drop out of high school to continue their education because their families didn't need them to go to work to survive because their families were getting a basic income. Yeah, so. one, one, 100%. And I, and I also think that we need to start talking about the high cost of poverty. Yeah. It costs a lot of money to keep people poor. And we know through research that when you look after people, when you provide people with what they need, uh, basic human rights and what they need to live in dignity, uh, that it's a cost-saving measure. So, so financial arguments, uh, talking about how much is this going to cost, we know through research that, that in the long term it's a cost-saving measure. Um, but we also know uh, in COVID, we also see uh, small businesses closing down. Yep. Uh, certainly in my riding, that's the heart and soul of Winnipeg Centre are small businesses. Yep. You know, we need money flowing through our economy uh, to make sure even small businesses can survive. I know that, um, um, you know, in order to stay afloat, you need customers and uh, you, you need to keep those small businesses open. Uh, and so uh, it's not surprising that uh, members from different pol political parties of all stripes are, are actually uh, supportive of my motion. No, I mean, it's fantastic to see. And I think that's crucial because... As you note that, you know, this is going to replace the, the CERB, which for my, uh, again, my, for my, for my non-Canadian viewers, it's basically the, 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 the stimulus, you know, wage replacement program that they've given to a lot of Canadians who have needed it. But I think what's been crucial, and this is something that really only the NDP have been pointing out, uh, not just Leah, but other uh, MPs as well, is that, you know, the CERB, as good as it's been, as, as crucial as it's been, is it has left out some of the most marginalized people. Like, for one example, if you hadn't have made $5,000 over the previous year, you weren't entitled. Or if you happen to have been unemployed when this crisis befell us, then you were sort of, you know, without a paddle. And I think that, and, and maybe you can speak to this, how this could not only you know challenge fix these long term challenges but also respond to the gaps within the current emergency response from the the trudeau liberals yeah well just just a couple of points uh one i think you know this has been going on for a number of months now we now know this could last 2 to 3 years as i indicated yeah. having uh individuals and families having to wait from one government announcement to the next to determine their fate yeah. Am I going to have enough money to pay my rent this month? Do, will we have money for groceries? Will we be able to pay our bills? This is taxing on people. It is bad for mental health. And it's getting to the point where it's cruel. I know that the Liberal government just made another announcement yesterday for another month. So how is that, how is that going to help Canadians if they have to wait? What's going to happen next month? Yeah. This is bad for physical health. It's yeah. bad for mental health. And I think at this time of pandemic, people need to know that they are going to be looked after. So I think, I think that's one, uh, one uh, you know, certainly critici massive criticism that I have. And as, as a representative of uh, the third poorest riding in the country, I need to know that people that live in our beautiful community aren't going to be spilling on the streets mm. like a couple of examples I just gave, which included children. Yeah. So I need, mm -hmm. to, I need to have that assurity. That was certainly one of the reasons that I put it forward because I think uh, people in my riding deserve to be treated better and with more respect. No, 100%. No, I think that's, that's yeah. a crucial point. And, and I think you make a, 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 a great statement where you say, you know, poverty is expensive. You can't buy things in bulk. You can't save you have no ability to get cheap credit in most cases. But, you know, uh, you, and, you, and you know her well, Nikki Ashton has often said, uh, in paraphrasing many others, of course, that, you know, uh, our system was designed this way. Poverty is not an accident. That's and, right. I, and I think that one of the good examples of, of your motion and others like it is that it's recognizing that we've sort of designed this society 
that like demands that a certain amount of people often racialized, not exclusively, but often racialized and, you know, women and what have you are, are, are there to, to, to be poor, to serve as an example to the rest of us left. We, we mess up. And I think that, you know, this is great to see because it's saying we're going to consciously decide, design our society to end poverty. And it hasn't been 100%. done yet. It hasn't been done. hundred percent. And, and, and this whole notion of work, I mean, you know, there's also a, a, a total lack of respect for unpaid work. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, caring for children at home, uh, caring for family, volunteering, um, you know, there's there's also a whole area of unpaid or unrecognized unpaid work uh, that that goes um, uh, certainly uh, un, like completely uh, not supported. But 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 the other thing about it is that you know we also uh, have many people that you know live with mental health uh, issues. Uh, we have senior citizens. Uh, you know, thousands and thousands across this country uh, that are literally one uh, paycheck away from being on the streets, literally choosing between medication and rent. We have students who, of no fault of their own right now, could not go to work for the summer because of COVID, people with compromised immune systems. And let's not even forget about those who have contracted COVID who now have long-term impacts as a result of getting COVID-19. We need to make sure people are looked after. Uh, Disabled persons who have been totally left out, totally totally left out of, of the programs, the support programs uh, coming out from government. We need to look after people better. Certainly our children deserve that. All people deserve that. Students, uh, families, uh, disabled persons, temporary foreign workers who we have seen perish because of abuse of working conditions during the pandemic. We need to, we need to change, change these things. This motion offers a way forward. And I think an important part of this motion is paragraph five, which is, and which has been a lot of the criticisms about a a guaranteed livable income is that it's an addition to current and future government public services and income supports. Meaning, uh, for example, uh, much of the uh, disability community, one of their uh, criticisms is that they'll be more poor, and they're absolutely right, Mm -hmm. which is why it can't be a total replacement. It has to be in addition to uh, existing um, government supports for for programs like you know, being able to purchase very expensive items like wheelchairs, medications, okay. uh, same with seniors. We can't get rid of those. We have to build our social safety net up and, and replace an archaic EI system that is clearly not working. Um, and, you know, uh, social assistance programs throughout the country that do not allow people to live uh, with basic human rights and dignity. Mm-hmm. No, I think it's, it's great that you noted that because, I mean, a lot of progressives, whether it's, it's the disabled community or whether it's uh, people within organized labor or, or, you know, labor or workers' movements, there's been a concern, you know, with basic income because it has been supported by people on the left like yourself and myself, but it's also been supported by people like Milton Friedman and, and, and people within the, the libertarian movement, for lack of a better term, that have you know, said, well, we'll, we'll give everybody a thousand dollars a month or $2,000 a month or $1,500 a month. And we're going to gut all these programs. And I think it's crucial that we, you know, put a, a stake in the ground saying, no, this is the, the latest addition to Canada's welfare state. It, it's not perfect. Yeah. It might not even be done after this, but it's the next addition. And I think that's good to note because, you know, a lot of people have apprehension and I think that, you know, this is, I think one of the good things here is that in speaking with these marginalized communities, you know, you get a real sense for what their concerns and needs are. And, and I think it's good that you've done that legwork here. Well, and I think the other thing to note is, you know, this is for people who do not have a livable income. For example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, get, uh, I wouldn't get a benefit from this specific program because, frankly, I don't need it. I'm a member of parliament right now. Uh, I have an income. I might not always be a member of parliament. Maybe there will well, be a time let's where that, I Let's may, hope you're a yeah, member for yeah. as long as you want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. but uh, you know, uh, and and I might need it. But you know, I I I have been visiting the encampments that are popping up in my area for people uh, that are being uh, housed in greater numbers by people that have lost jobs because of serve people that were already vulnerable be, uh, to the systems that mm-hmm. that were not supporting giving them proper support before who are now living in tents. And yeah. I can tell you. Uh, it's easy to say when you have a house to, to critique, but you know, when I'm walking around uh, some of these encampments, I met a woman. She said, I worked. I paid taxes. You know, I've been on EIA. I've been on CERB. I paid for those programs and I deserve that benefit. You know, we make these stereotypes and assumptions that some t- that people become poor by choice. But particularly during during the pandemic, we know that we have higher levels of unemployment. Mm-hmm. This could increase over time. There's many people who are experiencing homelessness for the very first time. Yeah. This is a life and death matter. And I think it is not okay that in a country as rich as Canada, that we have in, we invest so much money, billions of dollars, billions of dollars, fossil fuel industry. Mm-hmm. The first payout was to the pipeline, no. uh, uh, fifty million dollars to Mass Mastercard, twelve million dollars to Loblaw, yeah, and for and, fridges, and, yeah. and we have kids spilling on the streets right now because we're not getting proper support to make sure that people are housed and safe during the pandemic. Even though we know, even though we know that one of the most important public health and safety measures is that our people are able to keep physical distance and frequently hand washing. And I go back because I think if we don't do something now, this is going to become a crisis that requires yeah. people to have a home and access to clean drinking water. And I've had several discussions with some of my colleagues on the other side indicating I will not stop because I have people running around my riding with matted hair and sores all over their skin because they don't have access to clean drinking water because all those things were shut down when the pandemic hit to follow public health guidelines. Yeah, it's really a double whammy. It's like you you add in the fact that, you know, whereas maybe like certain places like a YMCA or, you know, uh, you know, public showers that might be available at least for some people. And yeah, a lot of those places have been closed or restricted. And again, as, as we noted on the outset, the, the reality of the Canadian stimulus is that it's, it's better than the American one in a lot of ways, but almost in a perverse way, the very, very poorest, the worst of the worst off were systematically, this government purposely designed a plan to exclude them. And we're seeing the consequences of that. Because again, if, if you didn't earn $5,000 from March of 2020 to March of 2019, you were excluded. If you earned $4,999, you got nothing. And I think that it's very telling that you know, we have a system designed, which is for everybody seemingly but the poorest. And you know, we want to now design a plan that maybe does the opposite. And I think that's crucial because some basic income plans, what in effect they are is a, 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 a big tax cut to everyone with a negative income tax. And I'm wondering if your plan is designed differently. I know Guy Caron, when he was talking about this during his NDP leadership race, did not envision his basic income as a, uh, a total tax cut. Because what would happen is, let's say, you guarantee every person $20,000 a year, just as a, a, a perspective number, that every single person would get a $20,000 tax cut meaning that for wealthy people, they would get a substantive tax cut. They would get at least $10,000 of that back, given that much of their income is taxed at the highest bracket. Yeah. Um, and so I wonder, is, is this designed in a way that, offers, that does not offer a benefit to the rich and wealthy and well-connected? Uh, how are well, we doing that from a, from a tax I have to, I, I, Like Just in all honesty, I think yeah. the, the, the rich and wealthy and well-connected have all sorts of benefits. Um, <laughs> yes, they you do, know, yes, offshore yes. tax havens. I think we <laughs> yes, need to yes. implement, you know, I think, I think if we're going to talk about benefits, I think that's maybe an area uh, that's just not hurting right yeah. now. I think we need a wealth tax. Yes. Uh, I think yes. we need to go after offshore tax havens. We I do. think we need to have a complete di- investment from corporate welfare yeah, government cool. boats, I, okay. and, and, and we need and, and at a time of pandemic when lives are on the line uh, if we choose as a country that we want to keep people housed that we want to keep small businesses going 
so that we don't have that we're not infiltrated by by corporate uh, uh, corporate businesses all throughout the country that we support small businesses we support support local community then we must find a creative ways forward that's what my motion is offering um, certainly I've had some very rich discussions about it it's uh, gaining traction it's not losing traction um, I just met with uh, people in my riding uh, in in a park uh, they came to visit me I had a tent social distance i can't do door knocking or have chosen not to just because i feel a mm -hmm. bit unsafe about it for sure and uh people are like please where do i sign yeah because you know you know you say get a job okay well the the reality of the current economic environment is that uh, businesses are closing and job security everybody is vulnerable right now everybody is vulnerable i want to make sure that people throughout this country have a stable, secure plan, something they can lean on should they unfortunately find themselves without an income or a, a massive cut in their income. That's what my motion is offering. And I'm hoping to have an opportunity to debate this in the House and hopefully push forward a legislation. Well, Leah, this has been fantastic. I'm 100% behind you. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description to the uh, official parliamentary uh, petition. We can sign it. I don't know what we're at now. What are we at now for signatures? I'm not sure. I, I haven't had a chance to check. I just ran from a... Um, um uh, I, yeah, I just ran from a, from another well, event. I'm not sure, but it should be close to 30,000 yeah. or more. Yeah, I think, uh, I think and, yeah, it's got to be above that now. If, if not, it's close. So I'm yeah, and if you do to, sign up, yeah. I, 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 we're not sending out a million asks for money. I just want to give people uh, reassurances, but we will send you updates about this. Um, uh, we will send you updates about this, um, uh, how the emotion is going. Sorry, it's been a bit of a long day. And, <laughs> Don't worry about uh, it. We also are planning a national day of action, so we'll make sure to let people know uh, mm -hmm. when that's happening, uh, who want to get involved. Um, yeah, so it's about movement. Uh, I come from the movement. Mm -hmm. I, I campaign. I said I want to bring the movement in the House of Commons. We are moving yeah. rapidly. It's yeah. about people. It's about pushing. We are powerful, and we have to get this through. Excellent. Leah, thanks so much for joining Thank me. I'll so throw much. in your... Your, your, your Twitter uh, in the description. This was fantastic. I'd love to have you again and keep on 100%. fighting. We'll give you an update. Excellent. Sign the Thank you so much. Okay.